and welcome to Yarn Journeys. Today's episode is the last one about my recent trip to Vancouver and Vancouver Island in Canada's Pacific Northwest. Here's what's on tap for today. We're going to visit a couple really cool yarn shops that I'm excited to tell you about. We're going to take in a fleece and fiber festival. And then we're going to explore the beautiful and amazing scenery of Vancouver Island's West Coast. And as always, we'll jump into some show and tell where I talk about my current projects and how they're going for me. And then I'd love for you to stick around to the end because I have an announcement about where this channel is headed. So grab your knitting and a nice and toasty drink and let's go explore the rest of Vancouver Island. So first up, I'm going to tell you all about Mad About You which is a really nice yarn shop in downtown Nanaimo. It's been around for 22 years and I just found that it was really cozy and fun to wander around and look at all the shelves of the beautiful yarn. It is totally and completely packed to the gills with all kinds of yarn at every price point. Anything you possibly could need, you could find in Mad About You. What I particularly enjoyed was looking at their own label of hand dyed yarn, uh, which they call dyeing for you. So uh, I found the colors that they had com just completely engaging and creative. And in fact, that's what I walked away with. Um, I I'm not usually a fan of sort of sparkles and bling, uh, but this one just sang out to me. Uh, this is Dying For You's sock yarn, and it is called Merino Sock Bling because it has just a touch of Stellina in it. I hope that is catching up in the light. In any case, it is a blend of 78% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 2% stellina. Now, I also, I am not usually an orange person or yellow, or, uh, but these colors are just gorgeous fall autumn colors. And we were there in October and the leaves were turning and I was just totally loving the orange and red colors of the trees uh, as the leaves were changing color. And I also want to point out the logo of the Dying For You um, uh, label. I just think it's adorable because I'm hoping you can see it's a bunch of sheep with witches hats around a cauldron stirring. Um, I'm actually going to keep the, uh, the skein band because I just think that is so fun. This sock to me kind of speaks to me as the perfect memento of fall in Vancouver Island with a little, little extra bling. Uh, so I think this is actually perfect for one of those one skein wonder shawls where uh, all you need is one skein and you can have a little lace shawl around your neck. Uh, the other thing is while I was there, um, I had a really great conversation uh, with the person who was helping me, uh, you know, and I said, hey, what's up with Vancouver Island? How come there is so much yarn and fiber goings on uh, and her response was that you know 40 50 years ago a lot of creative people just moved to vancouver island and they really created a culture in the place uh, that attracted people who enjoyed crafts who enjoyed creativity who enjoyed handmade work 
And as a result, uh, there's a really vibrant culture of yarn and fiber crafts there. The next yarn shop I'm going to tell you about is Sook Yarn and Fiber. This yarn shop is relatively new. It was opened only about two years ago by two friends. Um, and one of the things I first loved about it was that as I was driving down the main drag in Sook, uh, I saw this lovely sign that just had a sheep on it and said, yarn. Um, and I thought that was lots of fun. Once I went in, of course, I found the atmosphere quite warm and welcoming. It's a very spacious shop um, with lots of nice places to sit uh, and knit if you want to hang out or look through their great selection of knitting books and magazines. Uh, their yarn selection is, is quite wide and diverse with uh, lots of yarn brands that are internationally known represented, uh, such as Broco and Cascade, I believe. Yet they also have selections from famous Canadian producers like Sweet Georgia, which happens to be uh, just across the way in downtown Vancouver. What particularly attracted my attention, though, at Sook Yarn and Fiber was their farm yarn. They have a whole wall of yarn that they uh, source and produce under their own label, Sook Farm Yarn, that is focused on being local and sustainable. So what I walked away with was a skein of their fingering weight Sook farm yarn. Now, as I was looking through it, uh, Robin, one of the owners, came up to me and started talking to me about where the farm yarn and where each skein uh, came from. And it was clear that this one was a bit special to her. So before Robin came to Vancouver Island, uh, she was a sheep farmer on the mainland of Canada and she had a flock of Merino sheep. So when she moved to Vancouver Island, after making sure that her Merino sheep had found a wonderful and loving home, she took with her a bunch of their fiber to turn into yarn. So this is a skein of wool from her sheep flock that she had tended for so many years. And she had told me that just a few days or, or a week ago, she had dyed this beautiful skein of non-superwash fingering merino with Black Eyed Susans. Now I think of Black Eyed Susans as the famous yellow and black flowers that get put on the horse that wins the Preakness Stake. And it's also a, um, Black Eyed Susans are also a wildflower in this part of the Eastern United States, but clearly they also grow wild in Canada. It's just the perfect light color green that I love. I don't know what this yarn wants to be yet, but it's very soft. Clearly the quality of the wool is quite fine. It, and um, I'm excited to be an owner of this precious skein. As I mentioned in my first episode about Vancouver Island, I visited the Beehive wool shop where there was a notice about the Cowanchin Valley Fiber Festival that was going to be held in Duncan on October 22nd. So of course, uh, when October 22nd rolled around, I arranged to be there. And it was a, it's a small fiber festival. I'd say there probably was no more than 30 vendors, perhaps. Uh, there were some that were arrayed 
outside on the lawn of the building where the Fiber Festival was being held, which was a community center for the town of Duncan. And then uh, in the inside of the building, there were two floors of yarn and fiber vendors, as well as a delightful small cafe where there were home baked goods for sale. I really loved the atmosphere of this small fiber festival. You know, when you go to the bigger ones, um, and I haven't even been to Rhinebeck, I'm, I'm talking about, say, Maryland Sheep and Wool or the Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival I most recently went to, there's just so much to see, so many vendors you, you, and so many other people wandering around, it's really hard. I didn't get that vibe at all at the Cowichan Valley Fiber Festival. It was very low key. Yet, there was some really high quality stuff to be found. Um, and I also really enjoyed the atmosphere, how everybody there seemed to kind of know each other, or they were all people who were chatting warmly, yet they were also very friendly. As I was standing in line to get a ticket to enter, there were a few volunteers of the Fiber Festival who were walking up and down the line and saying hello and wanting to know where people had come from. And there were a couple women in front of me and when they were asked where they had come from, they said they'd come from Port Hardy, which is about a three hour drive or so up to the northern part of the island. And the volunteer was like, whoa, you, you came, you drove all the way here for three hours so you could come to the Fiber Festival? And the, the ladies said, yeah, we're, we're, I bet we're the people who come from the farthest. We're actually even a, just a little bit north of Port Hardy. And I, of course, uh, couldn't resist but say, oh, but I came farther away from you. And they turned around and I said, you know, I'm from Arlington, Virginia in Washington, D.C. And their eyes popped open. They were like, whoa, you're from really far away. And then we uh, spoke up a fun conversation about what I was doing on the island and how I'm finding the place and so forth. And almost everybody I spoke to at the Fiber Festival was just delightful and friendly and welcoming. And it, I just found it to be a very great experience. I mean, there was a wonderful array of vendors there. Uh, one of my favorites had a great name for a fiber and yarn producer called a sheep at the wheel. I just thought that was so clever. Uh, but I came to find out that many of the vendors there are actually nationally known across Canada. So if you get the chance to be on Vancouver Island in October, don't miss this one. So of course you might be asking, well, Melanie, what did you see? What did you get? Well, I am going to tell you. I was trying to be good, but there was just so many yummy and wonderful things to look at that I knew I wasn't necessarily going to find anywhere else. The first is a really good project bag. And the producer of this project bag is Spin A Good Yarn. And here's what I like about it. It has handles that are separate from the drawstring. And I like, I like my project bags to either have a drawstring or a zipper if possible, because that way things don't fall out. It's lined, but it's not a heavy bag. Uh, and, and it's lined sort of in a, a nice light canvas. And it has lots of, has lots of pockets. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but, um, and it's a nice big size. So it's the perfect thing for a sweater or a larger shawl. So she also sells these on her Etsy shop, which I will link to in the description below. So if you want to check out her bags, I highly recommend them. 
I also found a wonderful fleece dyer and fiber uh, prep provider named Chaotic Fibers. Uh, she uh, is from Brentwood Bay, which is not far from Victoria. So at this fiber festival, of course, there were tons of braids with multiple colors and so forth. And uh, having done just a big combo spin from braids, I was feeling a bit of braided fiber fatigue, if there is such a thing. But Chaotic Fibers had and I apologize for the crinkle, crinkle sound. I am keeping them in their plastic. Uh, she had a beautiful combo pack of a merino and bamboo blend, which she calls Bambino. And it's going to crinkle real loud. Hang in there. Ah! Um, I'll, I'm going to... I'm going to take one out and unwind it. It's, it's actually blended together as opposed to painted. And I just love these colors and I can't wait to spin it. So this of course is like a purple one and has a bit of yellow it has a nice gleam and it's so very soft here's one that is a little bit more lavender and Here's one that's got some green and a little bit of pink to it. So this will be fun to just do that kind of relaxation spinning where you don't have to think too much and you can just sort of meditatively spin and just watch the colors happen as they do. I got a couple other packs of fiber from her because she just had a really nice selection and I'll be honest the prices were really quite good and so when I was there the US dollar was quite strong compared to the Canadian dollar so it made it feel a little better when I thought I might be blowing a little bit too much money on yarn and fiber um, at least that's how I rationalized it to myself. So the other fiber I got from her, and apologize for the crinkles yet again, was a wonderful blend of red, merino, and tussa silk. And I, I wish there was such a thing as touch a vision because this is such soft and wonderful fluff. I also uh, purchased a similar blend of fiber in the colorway Cappuccino. And I think these two together will be a beautiful yarn pair for some color work in some way. So that's what I got at the Cowichan Valley Fiber Festival, which by the way is the oldest fiber festival on Vancouver Island because there's two more, one in the spring and one in the summer. So no matter what season you visit Vancouver Island, you can find a fiber festival to go to. And now here's some scenery of the beautiful and amazing west coast of Vancouver Island. Our first stop on Vancouver Island's Pacific Coast was beautiful Cox Bay near Tofino. And we climbed up the steep hill with its snarled roots and rocks to get a view on what was on top. That morning, a thick coat of fog blanketed the bay, but we could see the mountain tops peeking out over it. So I am told 
that Vigo Mortensen <laughs> is over there. I'm getting ready to direct a scene from a film. So hello, Vigo. He made sure to visit the famous Taco Fino in Tofino. Cox Bay had the most gorgeous sunsets with the clouds and the sun and the atmosphere. And as it got later, the sunset kept getting better. We next went to Yukulet to hike the Wild Pacific Trail. There we saw the most amazing windswept trees that looked like bonsais. We're here in Yukulet this morning, uh, taking a break from the Lighthouse Loop Trail, which is part of the Wild Pacific Trail. Uh, we're on the west coast of Vancouver Island. Um, my husband, who is there, is doing his photography thing. Uh, as you can tell, uh, it's quite foggy. In, in fact, even extremely foggy. Uh, but it's kind of still pleasant out here on the rocks. Getting some knitting done. Um, as I may have mentioned previously, I am uh, now working on the Dustland Socks by Stephen West. Uh, the yarn I'm using is La Bien uh Super Sock in the colorway, Lannister for the red. Uh, so I have made it through the double cuff and the um, nice little knit pearl pattern. See if you can see that and don't look too close there's a couple mistakes in there which I chose not to fix because I just wanted to keep knitting and these are socks which will go on my feet which no one will see so um, and I have just completed the heel flap turned it and started on the gusset uh, a good heel turn is always very satisfying I find um, so that's this morning's activities here on Vancouver Island. It is definitely so beautiful here, even with the fog. So see you soon. So the fog has burned off now. It's just sort of leaving there. You can see the blue sky peeking through and the crisp, clear rocks. What a gorgeous place to be. The views of the rocky coast were amazing. And check out this wild tree. Hello. Sitting here on Botanical Beach in southwestern Vancouver Island. Uh, just inside the boat, we are just inside the Pacific Rim National Park near the beginning of the Juan de Fuca Trail. So, once again, a lovely afternoon. Couple clouds, but very sunny. Uh, uh, my uh, husband is doing some. Uh, photography and uh, I'm just gonna enjoy and just gonna enjoy the scene. The main feature of Botanical Beach are the tide pools that occur when the tide recedes, leaving all sorts of interesting sea life to look at. Mm -hmm. 
like these beautiful sea anemones. Big giant piles of kelp were ubiquitous. Further down the coast, we hiked a section of the Juan de Fuca Trail where this beautiful green moss stood out against the orange of the cedars. This fungus looked like a beautiful cabbage rose. Hello. I am here at the Paison Creek campsite on the Juan de Fuca Trail. We are not staying here. Uh, we hiked in from the Parkinson Creek Trailhead, which is about three kilometers down the trail. Ah. It's a, it is definitely an interesting trail. It runs along the ocean side. Um, Hopefully I've shown you a few pictures of that. If not, I will. Um, and, you know, there's parts that are a bit, well, they're just uh, tricky. I think an experienced hiker would find it no trouble, but there's lots of roots and rocks and boulders to climb up and over and so forth. Um, uh, what drew us here is, uh, Paisant Creek and which is behind us and there's supposed to be a waterfall but there just hasn't been a whole lot of rain here on Vancouver Island in the past month or so and so while you definitely still feel like you're in a rainforest uh, because it's damp everywhere um, there's not much water in the creek at all um, which is fine because it made the hike a lot less muddy than advertised. I was really happy about that. So, uh, my husband is doing his photography thing, so I'm gonna be doing some knitting. Oh, I also meant to report that um, we've had some awesome wildlife spotting while we're here in the Port Renfrew area. Um, once again, we could uh, see whales from uh, to the beach, essentially. We saw them when we were at Botanical Beach yesterday. I have binoculars, so I was able to see the blowholes and the tail fins. Um, we think they were gray whales, as opposed to humpback whales, because the fins just didn't seem that big. Um, but that was cool. Uh, pulling into the Park and Seek Trailhead this morning, uh, we saw a, an owl. I don't know what kind. Um, on the trail today, uh, we saw lots of bear poop. I guess that doesn't qualify as an animal sighting, but we definitely know there's a bear in the area and we were singing to it. Um, along the way. I, I won't sing our song for you because you might not ever want to watch this channel again, but we enjoyed ourselves very much singing it. Uh, what else? Um, oh, I saw raccoons last night at the campsite. They were raiding the trash bin. That's, I can see that at home, honestly, so that's not that big of a deal, but uh, we saw a heron. Um, any case, lots of cool nature here. Good morning! We are here at Sombrio Beach. Uh, we walked along the beach uh, till we found the creek and followed it up to go see the secret waterfall. My husband, who is right there, is uh, doing some photography. This is an amazing magical place, which I am excited to show you. So, here we go. Glad I wore my red boots for this.
sound of the surf on the rocks. Our last night in the camper van, we were at the Jordan River campground right on the edge of the ocean where there were some amazing parasurfers to watch. We lit our last campfire of the trip and had a beautiful sunrise in the morning. And now it's time for show and tell. So I'm going to start off with uh, what I'm wearing. Uh, you might recognize it because it's quite a popular pattern. Uh, this is Andrea Mowry's Night Shift Shawl, which I knit last spring. In, uh, it, the yarn is uh, Julie Asselin's Lezu DK, which is a merino silk blend, and I thought I'd wear it today since the yarn is Canadian and this is a Canadian-focused episode. I also wanted to tell you about the sweater that you saw me wear in the scenes you were just watching. And here it is. This is Alice Starmore's Pharaoh pattern and the pattern is from her book Fisherman Knits. It came out in the late 80s and I knit this sweater in the late 90s so I think I started it in maybe I started it in 1997 and worked on it off and on and finished it until in 2000. Um, so the yarn is from Halcyon Yarn. It's their Victorian two-ply, which I think is supposed to be similar to the like a Jameson Shetland kind of gauge. Uh, and it is knit, of course, in a stranded Fair Isle technique. While it did take me a couple of years to get through it, I did love knitting this sweater. Uh, it is Fair Isle, of course, as I just said, and it has some, some big major steaking involved. And once, I'll tell you this, if you are afraid of cutting your work, all you have to do is work on a sweater like this one, steak it, and then you'll realize that it's going to be okay. <laughs> So, uh, and you steak for both the neckline as well as the sleeves. So it's um, knit in the round from the bottom up. You uh, steak for the sleeves, you steak for the, the neck. Um, and then you, um, once you reach to the top, uh, you join you join the shoulders with Kitchener stitch and um, I didn't do a good job of that so I'm not going to show you a close-up there was no YouTube back then there was no very pink knits where you could watch uh, a tutorial in both slow motion and to figure out how the heck you do Kitchener stitch. So I did the best I could from reading it from a book. Same thing with steaking. I learned to steak from the Alice Starmore book. Anyway, I really love this sweater and I didn't wear it for a long time because it's got very much that late 80s drop shoulder ginormous look to it. Well, that look is back and this sweater is perfect for wearing it, hiking and so forth uh, in, in the woods and camping. Now you might think, hey Melanie, that's, that's, that's an Alice Starmore. I mean, and it's, well, think about how much work that took you and, and 
all that stuff and you're going to wear it in the woods and in the camper van and going hiking. And I say yes, because it is very, very warm. Um, this wool is relatively rustic and it wears extremely well. The ferro pattern is based on patterns that were worn by the fishermen of the Faroe Islands for centuries. And hiking is the perfect activity to wear a sweater like this. So I love this sweater. I'm glad I'm wearing it again. And that's the story of my Alice Starmore Faroe sweater. Do you have a sweater of which there's a big story? one that you're super proud of. I call this one my magnum opus. It's definitely the most intricate thing I have ever made. What's your magnum opus? I want to know. Tell me in the comments below. Okay, so now we can get into more recent finished objects. The first one is my dust lint socks that I was working on on my trip. Uh, this pattern is by Stephen West and I am super pleased with how it came out. Just to recap, so the cuff is doubled uh, which makes it nice and stretchy and grabby. Um, and the fit is wonderful. I think this is the best fitting socks I have ever made. Uh, the pattern is, you know, very simple repeats of uh, knit pearl patterns. So as a sock goes, it's really easy, yet it's also entertaining. So I am definitely going to make another pair of these, I think. Now, the thing that was new to me is that they have a, a garter heel. The heel flap is made with garter stitch, and I guess that's for cushion. Um, I haven't seen that before, so I'll be interested to see how it wears. My next FO is also another pair of socks, and these are the bear paw socks that I completed uh, in Andrea Maori's sock challenge knit along that she had over Thanksgiving weekend. And I finished them on time. Yay for me. Uh, it is a DK weight pattern. Um, I uh, took the two yarns um, held together as fingering option. It did knit up quite Quickly, I will say, however, that I pretty much I pretty much spent most of Sunday knitting one sock. So this sock, or I don't know if it was this sock, one sock took two and a half days, and the other sock took a day. Uh, so it goes. But I finished the challenge. I am really pleased how these turned out. And because the skeins of yarn I used, uh, each skein had about 400 yards and I only used half a skein of each to make these socks, I could make another pair of socks with them. So I'm also a big fan of Andrea's curio pattern. So I think that's what they're gonna become. We'll wait and see. So, the last work in progress I am going to show to you is, of course, my Weekender sweater. Uh, this is the one that is uh, made from my sweater spin from the Tour de Fleece. It's getting big. Oh, yeah. So I am knitting the first sleeve and I am down to the cuff. I'm really pleased with how the colors have turned out. Um, and I have learned quite a bit uh, in making this sweater. One of the things I really try to do in each project I take on is to learn something new. Uh, and for this one, it was how to do a tubular bind off on the neck 
Now, uh, that was a little bit tricky. I had to do it twice. Um, one side is a little bit better than the other, but, but that's okay. No one's going to get close enough to me to look. And uh, yeah, so now I am on the sleeve and I'm about to do the ribbing on the cuff. I am using my Haya Haya flyers. Um, I really like these for small circumference knitting. So now one thing I am trying to manage is that this is a, you know, it's, it's a big, giant, comfy sweater. Uh, and that means, and it's also a drop shoulder sweater, which means that the shoulder drop comes to about here on me. And uh, as some people are known to tease me, I have T-Rex arms. I don't have very long arms. And so I've had to modify the sweater a little bit to make sure that I don't once again have sleeves that go past my fingertips. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, luckily, this thing is now uh, knitting up very quickly, so if I get it wrong, I can always rip out and figure it out as I, as I go, and it, it's not a big deal. So I think by the next time you see another episode from me, this, this one is going to be done. And I'm excited to wear this because it's going to be comfy. And now we've come to the part where I'm going to share a little bit about the direction in which I am going to take this channel. I started Yarn Journeys hopefully to be a channel where I get to share with the YouTube knitterverse out there uh, my adventures in traveling and knitting and fiber. And so far I've been excited to be able to tell you about my trips to Iceland and Ireland and so on. But uh, as can happen, uh, life has other plans. And for uh, personal reasons that I am not going to go into here right now, my wings have become somewhat clipped. Uh, I am not able to make any grand travel plans that uh, take me overseas for weeks at a time. So what does that mean for yarn journeys? I absolutely am going to keep it going because while I am, may not be going on journeys uh, to far-flung destinations for a little while, I am definitely taking some journeys into the fiber arts. I am using my time here at home to uh, take classes, to uh, keep spinning, keep knitting, and keep learning. And I look forward to sharing all of those discoveries with you. So there's going to be a bit of a reprogramming of yarn journeys. So you can expect me to cover some different kinds of content. And I would love to hear from you how you think it's going. What do you like? about what you're seeing and what is less interesting or not something that you particularly enjoy hearing about. Um, I've always meant this channel to be a way of creating community uh, for those who are interested in being adventurous in travel, in fiber arts, and in life. Um, and I hope to keep exploring as long as I can. So stay tuned uh, and you'll see what I come up with next. Um, I definitely am going to be taking uh, some trips as I can. They're going to be smaller trips, probably not that far from home. Uh, I am planning to go to Vogue Knitting Live in New York in February, 
And also, I mean, just this past weekend, I uh, took a class with Patty Lyons, the famous knitting teacher. So I hope to learn more, explore more, and bring it all back to share with you. So that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed what you were watching, uh, please do give that thumbs up button uh, a hit. And if you want to stay tuned for what's coming next on Yarn Journeys, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. So I'll see you soon next time on Yarn Journeys. Thanks so much for watching.